everybody, this is Jace with RMUS, and in today's Tech Connect, we're going to compare the DJI H20T M300 payload and the payload on the DJI M30T. On the surface, these payloads seem nearly identical, and admittedly, I myself had made the assumption as well. However, after putting these payloads side by side in multiple scenarios, there are definitely differences that could affect your purchasing decision, and hopefully, the images we're going to look at will guide you through that process. But before we dive into the results, let's take a look at the hardware of each of these cameras. This should give us some insight into what's reflected in the images. Both the H20T and the M30T payload feature two RGB cameras, one fixed and one zoom, as well as a thermal sensor. They also have a laser rangefinder and software features like smart track, live mission recording, and pin dropping features. We won't be covering those features here because they function exactly the same on both aircraft and as far as we can tell, aren't appreciably different. Now let's take a look at the images side by side, starting with the wide sensor. Both the M30T and H20T have a 12 megapixel CMOS sensor for the wide camera. The M30T has a slight edge with a larger half-inch sensor. Though there is a slight difference between the fields of view and a small difference in the sensor size between these sensors, from these two images, it's hard to see much, if any, difference. Our conclusion is that these sensors are virtually the same. Moving on to the thermal and zoom sensors, this is where the differences between these payloads start to show. First, we're going to take a look at the thermal sensors. On the surface, these sensors are extremely similar. They both share the same 640 by 512 resolution, the same 30 hertz refresh rate, and several other specs. But there are two primary differences between the thermal imagery captured with these aircraft that actually matter to the average user. First, while the H20T's thermal sensor features a 13.5 millimeter lens with a 40.6 degree field of view, the M30 has a 9.1 millimeter lens with a 61 degree field of view. The result, of course, when comparing these two images is that the M30T captures a larger area, whereas the H20T gets more pixels on an object, resulting in more accurate results and greater detail. Second, the M30T features what DJI has called infrared super resolution, which allows for capturing thermal imagery at a higher resolution of 1280 by 1024 pixels, while the H20T lacks this feature. However, it is worth noting that this feature is the result of additional software image processing. The M30T sensor itself has the same spec resolution as the H20T. In our opinion, the super resolution doesn't seem to increase the image quality. In fact, when comparing these two images, one from the H20T and the other from the M30T, with super resolution enabled, the super resolution image does introduce some type of striping artifact that isn't present in the H20T image. What this boils down to is that, absent some presently untold special use case, the infrared super resolution may not be a must-have feature. Finally, let's take a closer look at the zoom sensor. The H20T features a 1 over 1.7 inch CMOS 20 megapixel sensor with a 20 times optical zoom, while the M30T's zoom camera is a half inch CMOS 48 megapixel sensor with a 16 times optical zoom. There are some subtleties to comparing these cameras side by side. Because of the way the DJI Pilot 2 flight application treats the M30, it can be a bit confusing. Take for example these two images, which are set to the widest view of the zoom payload. When pushing in tighter on these images, it's plain to see that the M30T leaves quite a bit to be desired, not what you'd expect from a 48 megapixel sensor. That's because at its widest view, what we're actually seeing is the 12 megapixel wide sensor digitally zoomed with artificially increased resolution. It's when we increase the zoom and truly compare the sensors side by side that things get more interesting. Take for example these images, both captured at the first level of zoom for both cameras. While it's hard to complain about either of these images, after taking a closer look you can start to see the additional detail the 48 megapixel sensor has to offer. When looking at both cameras set to 20 times zoom, we think this is a great example of the advantages of the larger 48 megapixel sensor. You can see the fine detail of the object is cleaner, brighter, 
and with sharper detail overall. We also feel that the detail and nuances in color of the M30T has the edge over the H20T. When it comes to digital zoom, the H20T definitely has an advantage over the M30T. Distortion is always going to be introduced when looking at an object at this distance, regardless of the camera. That said, overall, we feel there's a greater amount of detail with the H20T, both on the object itself as well as the background and color representation of the trees and houses. Finally, we're going to compare the low light capability of these sensors. The results of this test are a bit surprising given that the H20T has a slightly larger sensor. Ultimately, it's easy to conclude that the M30T has the edge for low light performance. So where does that leave us? The truth is it can be difficult to choose between these two sensors, and our conclusion is that it basically comes down to what the emphasis of your specific mission is. Weighing things equally between the zoom capability and the accuracy of thermal imagery, we'd say that the H20T would be the better pick for inspection work, and that the M30T with its wider thermal field of view is slightly better for public safety. That said, either of these payloads can perform both tasks without any complaints from us. So hopefully you found this video helpful, and if you weren't already aware, RMUS offers an on-demand training course for the M30T in our online training center. You can check that out at rmus.com training. As always, make sure you subscribe to the channel, and if you have any questions, reach out to ask at rmus.com.